بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Many parents and educators nowadays are busy with their daily lives that they don't have much time for their children especially the younger ones and then suddenly they notice that they have become adults or they are teenagers now and they are not to their likings. There are many strange behaviors or etiquettes or morals or background knowledge and so on. And now it is too late, already too late for education and training and, and behaviors and etiquettes. The care for children should start early on. There's nothing more important than paying attention to the future generation. Nothing, and we do mean nothing. And we can understand this from the guidance of, and the life of the messenger Muhammad وسلم, himself. Before we explain the details of that, we need to realize that children are a gift from Allah Almighty, as Allah Almighty mentioned in the Holy Quran. Literally, he says, he give as gift the children to whomsoever he wishes. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran that children are a source of happiness in this world. And moreover, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and taught us the dua of the believers, the servant of Allah Almighty, the most merciful. Among the dua taught to us by Allah Almighty to pray to Allah Almighty for good offspring that will please you in this world and in the hereafter. So you can understand the importance of this. The guidance of the Messenger وسلم, towards dealing with children has many different aspects. First, from the emotional aspect. The Messenger وسلم, used to treat children with mercy. So much so, Anas, radiallahu anhu, his servant, he says, I have never seen anyone who was more merciful towards children than the Messenger Muhammad, <laughs> Never in my life. And so much so, the Messenger, sallallahu <laughs> himself, made it a criterion. Mercy towards the younger. Made it a criteria of being among the Muslim nations. He says, anyone who does not treat the youngers, the children, with mercy, he is not part of us. He is not a true Muslim. It is that important. And actually, Allah Almighty stated in the Holy Quran, one of the principles of good family life is to treat each other with mercy. Furthermore, in the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, was to love children and express that love to them. One day the Messenger وسلم, was playing with one of his grandsons and he expressed in public, openly, loudly, so that the child heard him and people around the Messenger وسلم, heard him. He says, Oh Allah Almighty, I love him. I truly love him. The expression of love, usually men are not good at, especially to our children. Uh, the mothers usually do that. They don't have a problem with that expression. But you, you need to express that love. We don't do that often. You need to do that and repeat it often and often. It is part of the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, declaring and expressing that love from one person to another is the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, by action and by order, even to adults. One day a man was sitting with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and a man passed by and after that he said by Allah Almighty that is a righteous person and I love him for the sake of Allah Almighty. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him did you inform him? He said no. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said go follow him and tell him that you love him for the sake of Allah Almighty. Express it. This is something very important to express love and you can understand the importance of expressing that to your own children and how it will fulfill that emotional need and psychological need in their life so that they will be stable in the future they will not be searching for love here and there they have already enough of that emotional support and love within the uh, family and surroundings 
The other aspect uh, of the Messenger وسلم, in this regard is that he praised women who used to be compassionate and merciful and loving to their children. In one hadith, the Messenger وسلم, praised a group of women because they were known for this criteria. It means more than the normal that is available with every mother. So those, they used to take care, extra care of their uh, children. The other part is their play, the children's play and fun. Now playing for children is part of their natural behavior and growing up process. It is very important and vital for their well-being, physically and psychologically and mentally and so on. This is something very important and critical in their life. And we can see in the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, that he respected that and paid attention to it. He used to visit children who were playing in their playgrounds and say salam to them and not stop them from their play. And sometimes the Messenger وسلم, will play with some of the children uh, around in their own. We have among the examples that is mentioned uh, that the Messenger وسلم, one day went to the children in their playground and Al Hussein عن, that is his grandson was playing there. And he meant him and, 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 and played with him and Al Hussein was jumping here and there and the Messenger وسلم, is laughing with him. Then the Messenger وسلم, uh, left. The other type uh, is paying attention to their hobbies. Now, many parents are ambitious and they want their children to be as ambitious as they were or even more, which is a good thing, not a bad thing. But you need to also realize that you have to pay attention to their hobbies, their own uh, things that are interesting to them. Not only yours, because they are still children. They have a life ahead of them. In the life of the Messenger وسلم, we have some surprising example of this. And among the examples that uh, we realize mentioned in one hadith, uh, one of the Sahaba line, he says, I had a nephew whose name was uh, Umair. And the Messenger وسلم, used to visit us. And the Messenger وسلم, will say salam to him, a young child. Uh, the age, according to the scholars of Hadith, was around three years old only. And he had a bird, a bit bird, to play with, uh, called Naghr, they called the Naghr. The Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'ala al-Nughair. Oh Abu Umair, nickname him, as, even though he is a very young child, and says, uh, how is your bird? How is it doing? It's fine or not? Later on, when that bird died, the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and, and uh, consoled the child for the loss of his bird, bit bird. Yes, because it was important to the child. So the Messenger of Sallallahu whenever he will visit, he will ask, how is it and how is your bird doing and so on. We can understand. By the way, SubhanAllah, the scholars of Hadith were criticized because of this Hadith. Some people, they used to claim, as I say, the scholars of Hadith, they narrate Hadith that are useless. We don't have any benefit from them. And they mention as an example this Hadith. What do we get? The Messenger of Allah visits somebody, said so and so to a child about a bird. What is the benefit? That is the claim. Now, SubhanAllah, the scholars of Hadith, the earliest I remember uh, or I recall was Abu al-Hasan al-Tabari. Uh, that is in the 6th century. So about 850 to 900 years ago. He wrote a book about the benefits deducted from this hadith and he mentioned 60 benefits. 60 lessons to be learned from this single hadith. In the aspect of religious matters, behaviors, etiquettes, and fiqh ruling. Interestingly, Ibn Hajar, عنه, that is what, 150, 200 years later, he mentioned them and he added to them many. And still, scholars later on added still more. Now we understand, even this, just understanding the importance of sharing and paying attention to the hobbies of children is something very important. So there is no such thing as a hadith that is not beneficial. All of them are beneficial in one case or the other. This is one of the examples uh, here. Another part of the care of the Messenger وسلم, for children was to give them gifts. We have many narrations of such. Uh, one of them, Aisha radiallahu anha, related, the Messenger وسلم, was gifted uh, a ring, a golden ring. So he called Umama. Umama is the granddaughter of the Messenger وسلم, and says to her, oh daughter, take this and wear it as uh, ornament, adornment. 
We have many other narrations, the Messenger of Allah Sallam gifting uh, children some gift. So we understand this aspect as well. You need to practice giving gift to your children often and often. With a reason or without a reason. When there is an occasion or when there is no occasion. But something that you need to practice often so that you, they, they will get attached uh, to you, inshallah. The other aspect we'll talk about is they care about their education. Teaching them and educating them. And this is on all levels. First, on the level of Iman and faith. Nowadays, the concept of teaching faith is neglected. In most of our uh, rulings and studies, we study about the rules and the regulation and so on. But teaching them faith and Iman is something that is very important. The Messenger Sallallahu used to pay attention to it. And they used to learn Iman, faith, as they learn Al-Fatiha, the Quran. You have to understand and memorize. This starts at a younger age. In the younger age that we have, we have the example of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah. He was a young child at the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, one day the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to me, O oh, young man, I am teaching you some words. So memorize them, pay attention to them. Memorize them, pay attention to them. Then he started saying to them, pay attention to Allah Almighty. Observe Allah Almighty. And Allah Almighty will observe you and protect you. If you ask, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you seek help, then seek help from Allah Almighty alone. The Messenger وسلم, continued, know and realize that if all people gather to benefit you with anything, they will not be able to benefit you with anything except what Allah Almighty has already ordained for you. And know and realize that if all people gather to harm you with anything, they will not be able to harm you with anything except what Allah Almighty has already ordained upon you. Imagine the concept of bringing up a child and linking him to Allah Almighty directly with everything he does. So, you respect your parents because of Allah Almighty. You pay attention to people because of Allah Almighty. You help the poor and the needy because you want to please Allah Almighty. You do your homework because you want to please Allah Almighty. The link, link him with Allah Almighty, not with you, not with the grades, not with future uh, income, with professions and so on, worldly life. This is one of our biggest mistakes. You don't link him to Allah Almighty. So now he is working only for worldly benefits, and thus he is wasting most of his energy, most of his affairs, most of his time for worldly benefits only, getting nothing from Allah Almighty. But if the intention was Allah Almighty, all of that would be considered ibadah. Whatever he does in this world is already for his record in the hereafter. So this concept of teaching them Iman was very apparent in the life of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam starting at a young age. The other one is teaching them Salah. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered the parents and educators to start ordering them to pray at the age of seven. We understand from this that you should not order them to pray before they are seven years old. We sometimes see people coming here to the masjid with younger children. If the child is coming by his own, no harm. But if you are telling him it is time for salah, let us go for salah, this is a mistake. Don't do that. Before the age of seven, per the order of the Messenger وسلم, you should never do that before they are seven years old. No matter how eager you might be. But because the child now might not realize it and might get bored before uh, time, for example, or might not behave in the masjid and so on. Furthermore, you are not allowed to link it with any type of punishment whatsoever until the age of 10. Another mistake. Do not link it with anything. If you do that, I will be upset. If you will not pray, I will be upset with you. I will not give you so and so. I will not take you to. No. Even if he does not pray, that is not your problem. So from the age of seven till the age of 10. And we can understand from that concept the importance of being patient with the child for a very long time. Now the salah is not yet obligatory upon the child until he reach puberty, which is usually for uh, different, but usually between the age of 13 or 15. So you're talking about six to eight years of just simply order and encouragement and so on. That is how lengthy it is, so that they will be linked to the Salah and loving the Salah and understanding the importance of Salah. And inshallah, it will continue with them throughout their life. The other uh, thing is teaching them the Holy Quran. 
And the Messenger of Allah used to encourage children who memorize part of the Holy Quran and give them positions, including being an Imam. And one of the youngest Imam that we have at the time of the Messenger of Allah leading his people in Salah during the time of the Messenger of Allah because he memorized few chapters from the Holy Quran and none among the adults in his place were memorizers. So he was the most memorizing. So the Messenger of Allah appointed him as their Imam. So he is a, I used to be their Imam and my cloth was short. People were poor at that time. They didn't have enough. So when I'll perform Ruku' or Sujood, sometimes it will slip, exposing part of the body. Until the people behind him and the woman says, prepare, try to gather some cloth for your Imam at least, so that he will be in proper dressing. But you can understand the importance. When a child achieves something, you have to praise him for it and, 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 and recognize that. This is an achievement. And furthermore, uh, we have one narration, either it was said by the Messenger of Allah or by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, a young child who memorized the Holy Quran, he has been given his share of wisdom. Which is true, at a young age. No matter what, he will benefit from the blessings and barakah and wisdom of the Holy Quran at a young age. So if he has memorized it at this, this young age, for sure, this is going to reflect upon him throughout uh, his life. The other part is about paying attention to them uh, in morals and etiquettes. This is something that you need to do often and often until it becomes their habit, their lifestyle. In one hadith of the Messenger of Allah, the Messenger of Allah said, goodness is a habit. Means, when a person practices it so often, it becomes part of his lifestyle. He cannot do the other. If you always control yourself and you do not let uh, your anger uh, takes over you, this will become your lifestyle. It becomes your normal. If you always drive in a correct way, even if you go to another country that does not abide by the rules, you are not going to break. You will still try to abide as much as you can. It will become part of your life. If you practice generity charity all the time, it will become part of your lifestyle. And this is, this is why the Messenger of Allah Sallam taught us to repeat this to children until it becomes their lifestyle from a young age. So if you are practicing regular charity, let your child share with you. Give him a little thing to put it in the box for children or give them directly and so on. Tell him about the things that you want and if he wants to share, give him some money or allowance and tell him if he would like to donate part of it to poor people and needy people so that he will get used to the concept. When you are treating people, when you are controlling your emotion, when you are saying salam, smiling, explain it to him. Let him practice it so that he will get used to it until it becomes his lifestyle as the Messenger Sallallahu taught us. Uh, part of the teaching of the Messenger of Allah Sallam, for example, teaching them the etiquettes of greeting. We have the narration of Anas radiallahu an, where uh, he says, uh, the Messenger of Allah said to me, Oh son, when you go to your family, and when you enter, say salam upon them, greet them first. It will be a blessing upon you and a blessing upon them. Uh, the other one, the etiquette of food, for example, and eating. Umar bin uh, Abi Salam radiallahu anhuma, he was living in the family of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa because his mother was the wife of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa uh, and he was an orphan. He lived in the household of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa He says, one day we were eating, and I was a young uh, boy, and my hand went here and there. It was one plate, same food, and his hand was all over the place. So he said, the Messenger Sallallahu said to me, O oh son, or O oh young man, say Bismillah when you start eating, and eat with your right hand, and eat from what is in front of you, your right direction. Practical teaching at that time, with compassion and mercy, so that the child will understand and learn. Uh, we have one of the mistakes that we are doing in our teaching to children sometimes, is that we start blaming them. Blaming is not a good thing. Sometimes blaming is required, but usually it is not a good thing. And that is why in the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu we do not have a single narration of blame. In fact, we have the exact opposite. Anas radiallahu an, the servant of the Messenger Sallallahu he said, and he was a young man, he said, I served the Messenger Sallallahu for seven years. Not once did he say to me for something that I did, why did you do that? Nor for something that I did not do, why didn't you do that? 
So not a single time. Blaming him for neglecting something or for doing something the, the opposite of what the Messiah Sallallahu ordered him to do. We don't have this. So yes, teaching and guidance is important, but avoid blame. Make it in the form of uh, merciful and compassionate uh, teaching to the uh, children. Uh, the concept about, uh, about play also about children, we have in the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, even in the masjid sometimes. One day the Messenger وسلم, was performing the salah, leading people in salah. And in the sujood he was very late, very late. So that some people thought the Messenger وسلم, died. It was that lengthy. And in one narration, a man raised and he saw one of the grandson of the Messenger وسلم, riding on top of the Messenger وسلم, in the sujood. So when the Messenger وسلم, finished the salah, people asked him, Oh Messenger of Allah, you lengthened the sujood so long that we feared something happened. The Messenger وسلم, said, No, nothing happened except my grandson came and he was playing and he rode on top of me rode on my shoulder in the salah. So I did not want to hasten him, to speed him, until he finished playing. Understand the merciful and compassionate behavior of the Messenger وسلم, even when he is in public. Something unbelievable. None of us probably dare to do such a thing. Or will fear what people might do and so on. But that was the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم. In another time, the Messenger وسلم comes to the masjid carrying Umama, the granddaughter. Because when he was leaving, she started crying and she wanted to stay with the Messenger وسلم. So he brought her inside the Salah and he was carrying her in the Salah. When he will perform Ruku' or Sujood, he will put her to the side. When he stands again, he will carry her again. Once the Messenger وسلم, was delivering the Khutbah, the pulpit, in front of people, the member. And one of the grandson, either Al-Hasan or Al-Hussein, came uh, and he was uh, wearing some clothes that was slightly longer than uh, him, lengthier than uh, him. So he was tripping on it. He could not walk straight, so he was tripping on it. So the Messenger وسلم, came down from it, carried him, and went back. And he says, Subhanallah, fairly Allah Almighty says the truth when he says, uh, He says, I saw my grandson and I could not control myself from mercy and compassion upon him until I came and carried him. Could not. So the concept of paying that attention to the children is something that we need to learn from the uh, life and practice of the Messenger. We conclude with the uh, social behaviors or inclusion within the society. Uh, this is something also clear in the life of the Messenger Sallallahu uh, He used to encourage people to bring children to occasions and festivities and so on. So much so even in the Salah of Al-Eid for example, or the Salah of Istisqa and so on, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam specifically encouraged the Muslims to bring all their children to the Salah. All of them, bring them all, let them be part of that uh, festivities and so on. When the Messenger وسلم, used to return from a travel, the children will meet him. They will go out, people will take their children to greet and meet the Messenger وسلم. And the household of the Messenger وسلم, will raise one another, the children, who will be the first to greet the Messenger وسلم. Uh, Abdullah bin Jafar, the son of the cousin of the Messenger وسلم. Uh, he was an orphan after the murder of his father. Uh, so he said, one day, whenever the Messenger وسلم, comes, the household, the children of the household, will race towards the Messenger وسلم. So one day I was first. I was able to reach first. So the Messenger وسلم, carried me between his hands. Then later on, one of the sons of Fatima radiallahu the grandsons of the Messenger of Allah reached. So he put him on behind. The Messenger of Allah was riding the animal. So he did not deny Abdullah bin Jafar radiallahu his ride that he reached first. So he deserves this place, special place in the hand of the Messenger of Allah and he kept him there although the grandson was late and he put him uh, behind him, paying attention to both of them uh, equally. That participation within the public and in, in, in occasion is something that is important. It builds the character uh, of the child and the personality of the child. A similar one is at, uh, attending the gathering and the sessions 
the public sessions like mashallah we see many of the parents bringing their children uh, to the session and uh, waiting and saying this is something also very important that the messenger وسلم, also encouraged uh, boys and girls, interestingly, uh, Khalid bin Saeed uh, he once brought his uh, daughter to the assisting of the Messenger وسلم, and the Messenger وسلم, prayed for her with barakah and blessings and lengthy life. Uh, and so, so that part of inclusion and teaching them as well the etiquette in one gathering, uh, people came visit the Messenger وسلم, group of people. And among them, one young man wanted to speak. So the Messenger وسلم, said to him, let the elder speak first, and then you speak. So he did not deny him his right. He just taught him the etiquette. Let them finish, and then you can say whatever you uh, want. Not den denying them their rights also in the general etiquette. In the general etiquette, once the Messenger وسلم, was in his gathering with the elders among the Sahaba, and the elites among the Sahaba, and to his right, the first right, was a young boy. So directly sitting means he was the first to come, or so on. Uh, in one narration, that was Abdullah bin Abbas, the cousin of the Messenger Sallallahu So he was sitting to the right of the Messenger Sallallahu The Messenger Sallallahu was gifted some milk to drink. Usually after the Messenger Sallallahu would drink, that will be given to the right side. To the left were Abu Bakr and Umar and the elders. To the right was Abdullah bin Abbas. Whom should you give it to? So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the young boy, do you allow me to pass your turn and give it to them? He says, no, by Allah Almighty, I'm not going to pass my turn from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, I don't want to do that. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave it to him. He says, right. So he gave it to him, including also the, the elders were there, but that is his right. So he gave it and he respected that uh, from him. So you understand that importance within the sessions, the children will learn the etiquettes and the manners of the elders and how to treat them, how to respect them, how to participate in social debates and so on. Something that is uh, practical and very uh, important that we need uh, to pay uh, attention to. Final point, one of the rights of children and dealing with them is to make dua for them. As we learned in the first, in the beginning, how Allah Almighty taught us to make dua for the blessings and, and their future, and that there will be a blessing for us in this world and the hereafter. Part of the dua is to pray for their barakah, for their well-being, for their future, for their success in this world and the hereafter. Make it part of your daily routine dua to pray for your family and your offspring. Something very important, do not neglect that. Part of that dua, uh, by the way, the Messenger of Allah, whenever uh, the, the families or the parents will bring their children to the Messenger of Allah, he used to make dua for their children. Make dua for the children. So make it a practice, a regular practice. Part of that dua is to make the dua of protection. What people might care call ta'weed, but not the, the ta'weed that you write or you hang. No, the dua, the form of dua. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make dua ta'weed to Al Hasan Al Hussein radiyallahu anhu ma. And uh, the dua that he used to make, أعيدكما بكلمات الله التامة من كل شيطان وهامة ومن كل عين لامة. He used to say to them, this was the dua of protection of your father Ibrahim alayhi salam to his children Ismail and Ishaq alayhi salam. And then when Qul'a uh, Rabbil Falaq, Qul'a Rabbil Nas was revealed, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started using these two as protection. So make it part of your daily adhkar to make dua of protection for your children as well. We pray to Allah Almighty to protect our children and bless them and choose the best for them in this world and the hereafter. Make them a pleasure for us in this world and in the hereafter. We pray to Allah Almighty to guide them to worship Him correctly and to be righteous uh, servant of Allah Almighty, a righteous persons and people in the society. We pray to Allah Almighty to grant them success in their worldly affairs and their religious affairs we pray to Allah Almighty to make uh, us and our children live a good life and a happy life and have a good end in this world and a successful uh, return to Allah Almighty and a beautiful and honorable uh, presentation in front of Allah Almighty and a higher place in paradise Ameen wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een